The point is, again, stocks don't go straight up and stocks don't go straight down. There is a pause, there is a rest, there is a re uh, reset, okay? And that's very, very important. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good morning everybody. Welcome to uh, another edition of uh, the AccessToTrade.com weekend update show. Hope everybody is uh, doing well. Um, so I, I got sick around Wednesday, okay? Um, started out pretty much, you know, runny nose, uh, itchy eyes, a uh, little bit of a cough, nothing, nothing crazy. And as the week progressed, if you guys noticed, there was no video um, Thursday night. And I got really sick. And the, the most amazing part about um, the fact that I got sick, I've been incredibly careful, like really, really careful. I've been, you know, I was one of the very first people a month, month and a half before anybody to kind of uh, quarantine myself and my family. Um, so I got sick like Wednesday and today's Sunday. And this is the first time that I actually went outside, walked my dog. Um, I'm about 80% right now. I still have a lingering cough. The craziest part about it is um, no fever, like literally no fever, but I felt like I had every single symptom without the fever. So uh, I didn't get tested for COVID. I was like, well, you know, what's the point? I'm already sick. Um, I quarantined myself. I was literally on the opposite side of the house uh, with everybody in my family. And the most amazing part is now, you know, little by little, I'm getting better. I think I still think I'm about 80, 85 percent. At least I'm conscious. I don't have that feeling like death, you know, that death feeling. But uh, more important is, uh, I think I should be fine. At least uh, I'll, I'll definitely be fine for tomorrow's trading session. Um, but I think the moral of the story is, I, you know, I, did I have COVID? I have no idea. Okay, I don't think I did, but uh, who knows? You know, we're basically year one in this crazy. Um, crazy sickness pandemic. Um, just stay, try to stay as healthy as possible. Um, the most important part is our health. And, you know, again, this is what, day five? Um, most important, guys, stay healthy, stay inside. Again, eventually everybody will get this thing, but let's try not to uh, put ourselves out there uh, that we're exposing ourselves for no problem. So if you guys are under the weather um, or sick, uh, Godspeed, healthy recovery. Uh, hopefully, uh, I should be 100% by like Monday, Tuesday. So um, I'm okay. Okay, I'll be I'll be all right. Thank you very much for all you guys who are um, sending me emails and text messages. Uh, thank you very much. It means a lot. Um, so let's talk about the market. Um, we had a flat flat week on the market. Okay, uh, if you look at all the uh, all the indexes, uh, the S and P, the Nasdaq, uh, the Dow Jones Industrial squeaked out you know, little gains, 0.1%, 0.2%. Um, I, I think the biggest takeaway from uh, last week's session was, number one, speculation money was very, very aggressive. Okay, if you look at names um, like a NEO, for example, um, you know, like a NEO that had this really, really aggressive run, uh, like a space uh, that we had yesterday from that 22 break, you know, really had a really big break uh, to 2340. You're, get, you're still getting big speculation money hitting the markets. Uh, the biggest takeaway that I saw this week was the names that had big, big runs. We've been talking about this uh, for about, a, you know, for about three, four days. The names that had big, big runs, they stopped rallying. And the most important part that not only did they stop rallying, they stopped rallying after they got upgrades. And I'll give you a perfect example. First of all, here was the big breakout a couple of, you know, about a week ago. We talked about this whole level here, 282, 283 on the queue. So we had that. And I started talking about by Tuesday, Wednesday, the market really needs a rest, right? You guys remember that video? I think it was on Wednesday. The market really needs a rest. And again, when you have a scenario too far, too fast, you can have a lot of names that just get tired and get exhausted. Not that they're done rallying, but the point is, again, stocks don't go straight up and stocks don't go straight down. There is a pause. There is a rest. There is a re uh, reset. Okay, and that's very, very important. So what the market is doing right now, you can clearly just see it uh, you know, from, from your naked eyes. It had this big, big run up. Okay, stock prices got overly... Um, overly aggressive very, very quickly. And now we're just kind of moving lower here. And the biggest takeaway here is, again, this is the second day in a row 
that we close below the five-day moving average. Everybody see that, right? Here's the orange line. Here's the five-day moving average. Again, if you're uh, joining us for the first time uh, in this broadcast, the five-day moving average, at least for me, is the shortest uh, term sentiment that we could possibly have, okay? So I do believe still, and we talked about this in the webinar, I do believe still there is going to be a back test coming to this five to this 10-day moving average because that would correlate with the exact breakout of the range that we took out uh, that started on September the 10th, right? So if we get down to right over here, somewhere around this 85, 86 area on the queues, it will be a very, very healthy macro structural back test okay it will reset some of these charts and if the market continues to be strong if the sentiment is strong and the bulls defend the 10-day moving average on the close then at, at that point we'll start turning around and start moving higher if indeed we do get a rally uh into the fourth quarter again that's a very big if that's why we always say we're not in the business of guessing uh, we're not forecasting. We're not projecting. Uh, we're, we're, it's it's all about day to day. Okay, day to day where stocks close either above their supply zones to go higher or below their demand zones to get lower. That's the data that we're trading on. But I think the key point of kind of this discussion is what the stocks didn't do. And I want to show you a couple examples. So Amazon, uh, Amazon had their Prime Day. You know, we talked about it in the video leading up to Prime Day. There was going to be a run up, right? It was going to be a run up on Prime Day, but everybody knows about Prime Day. Everybody knew about Prime Day for about you know a month, month and a half. So uh, unfortunately, and I kept on reiterating this point, these events get sold. Okay, they do. The, the majority of these events, uh, the Apple, uh, the uh, iPad, um, the, what's saying the iPhone event, it got sold. The stock is lower than the iPad event. The, uh, Amazon got sold, but what we started noticing this week stocks were getting sold on upgrades okay and that is a huge and absolutely huge uh kind of a warning sign okay so you saw the upgrades uh that came out on amazon throughout uh throughout the week big big numbers right they got sold roku that's having a monster monster run absolute monster run and again there's nothing wrong with roku again it's trying to test its 10-day moving average uh probably <clears throat> excuse me on monday uh, there's nothing wrong with the stock. It just needs a natural, healthy back test. But the point is, you know, you saw the big upgrades on Roku and it got sold off. And Netflix, again, that kicks off uh, earnings season. I think it's on Tuesday. I think they report uh, Tuesday. So they kick off uh, the beta names earnings season on Tuesday. They've gotten upgraded now three days in a row. Okay. Not once, not twice, but three days in a row. And every single day, not only did the stock not rally, they sold the stock pretty much at the lows of the day every single day. So which basically br brings you to, to, to the theory going into Monday session. Again, we can't you know, trade past Monday. Again, there's so much uh, fluidity in the news cycle with COVID. And again, guys, remember the elections are what, three weeks away? right, two and a half weeks away, you're going to see a lot of volatility, okay? You're going to see a lot of exit polls. You're going to see a lot of uh, COVID news uh, breaking, especially towards uh, the middle of the day. So you have to kind of, you know, trade a little smarter uh, in the next two, three weeks, maybe not have that overnight exposure that you've had in the last couple of weeks. And again, granted, there was some phenomenal moves, uh, you know, names like Tesla, names like ZM. ZM was the was a phenomenal move. If all you guys have been watching this broadcast, we had the, this 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 pivot literally from 490 all the way to the 562 area in the last three four days. It was, it was a phenomenal move. But here's the here again. Here's the reality. When you're looking at stocks that had these big big runs, and 95 percent of them lose those ranges or start back testing those ranges on good news. That's a very, very big issue. So I think going into this week, just understand that, again, you don't need to predict where the stock market is going to be three weeks from now. Okay, we, we don't care about that. We're just trying to trade on information that we're gathering for the next trading day. So, for example, I'll give you another perfect example. Right. So Tesla had this awesome breakout. Right. Really, really awesome breakout uh, on this 449 level. We, we, we I think we covered this area. If all you guys have been watching this broadcast. This is one of the better trades. Uh, I caught Tesla great. Uh, what was it? What day was that? That was on Wednesday, right before I got sick. Phenomenal trade. Went right into supply. It was perfect. The problem with that is if a stock is breaking out, and it's confirming macro supply, and it even confirmed that 462 level, it shouldn't have failed, right? So you have stocks that are overbought, right? Excuse me, not overbought, but over exaggerated for two, three weeks. They're not rallying on, on upgrades, okay? 
uh, their failing ranges after they break out, okay? Uh, these, are, these are signs, these are warning signs. Again, I, I think it would be naive and very, very um, just stupid uh, to kind of avoid these signals. And the most important part going into Monday is if you're gathering all this data and everything is telling you, hey, by the way, I don't know if you should be really, really getting aggressive in stocks, but more important is, hey, look, look at the evidence. Look what's in front of you. Look what the, you know, look what the cues are correlating. The same thing that the market's telling is the stocks are being sold on good news. That is kind of a big deal. So I think going into uh, Monday's session, you know, I, for some of these names, I am sell bias. I still think uh, the market is overall healthy, but again, I personally think the market should uh, back test at least to this 10 day moving average, if not to this 283 level, which is the mega rise in support, okay, on this whole range here. So I do believe and I'd like to see a reset of the market so we can have a strong, you know, really, really strong uh, constructive rally into the fourth quarter. But every evidence, every piece of data that I'm seeing uh, while charting this weekend, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, is telling me that we should have a back test. So when you have Netflix, Three days in a row with with down with upgrades and the stock can't rally. Again, I'm not going into Netflix bullish into tomorrow. Now, again, nobody knows what's going to happen. Uh, nobody knows what's going to happen with Netflix after they come out with earnings on Tuesday, right? We had ridiculous uh, upgrades, street high, uh, 670, 675. Uh, price target. So who knows what's going to happen with Netflix uh, after earnings? Maybe the stock does go to $700 a share. But again, until they do so, we only can trade on the data that we are getting. So going into this week, guys, um, I, again, I am, I'm kind of sell biased a lot of these, uh, a lot of these beta names just for Monday. Again, Tuesday, we could have a completely different conversation, especially uh, with Netflix releasing uh, their first, uh, excuse me, they're releasing their earnings uh, for you know, for the earnings season, that's going to pretty much start a chain reaction for all these beta stocks. So we're just taking it one day at a time, uh, one trade at a time. And the most important part is again, just stay level-headed. Okay, again, trade the market that you have in front of you, not the market that you want. And so it's very, uh, very important. So uh, these are the key levels. Uh, and I kind of want to end this uh, a little bit, a little earlier, just because again, uh, I want to get some rest today. I want to stay in bed. Uh, try, so I could be 100% fresh for tomorrow. But these are the levels that we really need to hold. Um, definitely, definitely need to hold to kind of have a bias uh, going to the next trading session. 286.20 on the Qs is the 10-day moving average. Uh, this would definitely be an area that you'd like to, if you're a longer-term believer in this bull market theory, uh, this 286 area is a very, very strong level that the market can hold. Again, stocks do go from supply to supply, demand to demand. And they usually do hold at least once that rising support. But this will be definitely the key level here, uh, this 283 level here on the Qs. That would support this whole range breakout uh, that started September the 10th. Uh, if you look at the SPX, right, if you look at the SPX as well, again, this is the warning sign. And this, and this, was, my, this was my point that stocks usually hold their rising 10-day support. You see this green line, right? Right, you see how the SPX held uh, held that 3440 rising support. That's my point. Stocks usually hold that rising support the first time. So if the Qs uh, do test that 286 level, we should get a high probability bounce there. So for, for the S and P, uh, obviously you want to see the bulls hold. Uh, that 3461 rising support that's very important and to the upside you want to see a remount of the 3500 level which is the five day moving average to kind of give you a definitive view of what's going to happen next uh, again can a back test come to this whole range breakout that we had on this 3425 area absolutely this would be a mega defense this would be a literally uh, a huge line in the sand just in case we lost the 10 day moving average especially on a gap down uh, this would be a huge line in the sand because again, this was this would define this whole range uh, that we took out on uh, September the 10th. So it's very very important levels. Obviously, over 3,400, it's a green line. Uh, we go back higher. Uh, if you look at the biotechs, for example, again, they actually had a great run. <clears throat> excuse me, off the September bottom, really really great run. But now you have again another case scenario as setting up here. Here they broke out of the whole range. Um, on September the 16th, and now again, they're trying to successfully test that area again, big red flag, they lost the five day moving average, and this time around, they closed below the 10 day moving average as well. So you, you can see here again, it's, it's not the point of, <coughs> it's not the point of 
that I want to see the market go lower. I think we need the market to go lower. Again, if everybody believes that traditionally we do have an incredibly aggressive set season, seasonal session coming up for the fourth quarter for the market to rally, we need stocks to reset. It would be great if they could just do it in one day, just gap on Monday, again, fingers crossed, back, gap down on Monday, hold those levels, everything goes red to green, we're back, you know, we're back on the horse. So uh, guys, have a great, great weekend. I just wanna, want to give you guys a little bit of glimpse and kind of get you set up macro-wise uh, for uh, tomorrow's session. Uh, for all you guys who are joining us in the live webinar, uh, please get there around nine o'clock. We usually start uh, morning strategy uh, shortly after. Uh, I am sell bias beta for tomorrow, just for tomorrow, okay? Depending how they open up. Um, and again, obviously, if they start getting stronger, we'll obviously look at channels to the upside. Again, I don't care about being wrong theoretically, just don't be wrong financially. Guys, have a great uh, remainder of your Sunday. Stay healthy, and with God's help, I'll see you all in the field tomorrow.